All right, let's get right to the interview segment. He just released a brand new book this week called Profiles in Corruption, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite, author and president of the Government Accountability Institute. Peter Schweitzer joins me again. Welcome back, Peter. Um, I, I'd like Thanks. to get right into this. I mean, your books, your books are about following the money, uh, exposing corruption. Who's America's most corrupt politician who's in office? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, very hard to answer. Uh, in the case of Joe Biden, what stands out, he's not currently in office, but he's seeking office, is um, there are five family members uh, who uh, were engaged in, I would argue, very corrupt deals while he was vice president of the United States. That's highly unusual, Eric. You sometimes find one family member, maybe two, but to have five is unprecedented as far as the research I've ever uh, found. What did you find? Uh, what we find were a couple of things. Uh, number one, you have Hunter Biden, deals that he was doing. Some of those are already known. There are more of them involving Russians and Kazakhs and other entities. Uh, in some instances, these oligarchs gave money to Hunter Biden. And then we have photographs of those individuals meeting with Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, you also have his brother, uh, James Biden, uh, who joined uh, as executive vice president a construction company, a new construction company in 2011. He had no background in construction, but within six months they had landed a contract to build 150,000 homes in Iraq. Uh, funded by the federal government, uh, and there were other contracts to follow. Peter, are, are, are any of these contracts and deals tied back to the former vice president? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you look at the case of the construction company, for example, James Biden, Hillstone, uh, the name of the company, uh, on their biography of him as an executive, uh, they basically say uh, he's working for us because he knows his way around uh, but, but, but politicians Peter, that, you and the know, you, and I, you and I both know that necessarily isn't illegal. It's when the quid pro quo act Correct. happens. Can you tie? Correct. I mean, we have Rudy Giuliani earlier in the show telling us he has proof, he has evidence of quid pro quo on the Bidens and specifically to, tied to Vice President Joe Biden, wanna, President Joe Wannabe. Yeah, I mean, look, that's really the question, right, is, is were there laws broken here? And it's unclear. We don't know how these deals went down, but there are a lot of things that happen in Washington, D.C., Eric, that are corrupt, uh, that are legal. And we either, either need to change laws or I think we need to shame people because what frustrates people is the self-enrichment that takes place. It's not just what's illegal, it's what's legal Boy, and people do I anyway that, that I think is Peter, part of the problem. I, I wrote a book called The Swamp <laughs> and it was exactly that. I, yeah. I had plenty of material for that book. You also point out that Elizabeth Warren isn't without her, uh, I don't know, hands a little bit dirty in the corruption scheme? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, not really anything illegal, but Elizabeth Warren was hired in the 1990s by Congress uh, to write uh, very specific pieces of, of law related to bankruptcy for large corporations and class action lawsuits. And she was on the taxpayer payroll for three years. During that time and then shortly after, she started hiring herself out to large corporations, helping them interpret those laws and basically helping them get around those laws. <laughs> and she explicitly said that uh, in, we've got the legal documents where she said, here's why I was hired by this company. And she made millions of dollars doing that. Now, mm -hmm. is that illegal? No, but it is certainly ironic because Elizabeth Elizabeth Warren has rightfully so criticized others who have done that, uh, but here she is doing the same thing herself. It's amazing, Peter. As we, as I was research, researching my book, it, it's so many of these things aren't illegal, but they certainly could be interpreted as unethical. I only have about a half a minute or so. Tell me about, you know, I go back over these times. Um, Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, her husband was sitting on bank boards and she was making laws yeah. that affected those specific banks. Is that not illegal? Is it just kind of gross corruption? Well, it's, it's two s set of rules, right? I mean, if you were a publicly traded corporation and you don't disclose conflicts of interest, you're going to get in big trouble with the SEC. Uh, the problem is those two rules don't apply to politicians. So the root of the problem is a lot of it's not illegal, and it's not illegal because the people writing the rules don't want it to be illegal. That's really the root of the problem here. All right, Peter Schweitzer. But before we go very quickly, have we fixed that loophole, the Stock Act, yet? Uh, not really, no. Nobody wants to talk about it. They're still getting IPO shares of stock. They're still able to trade stock in companies that are introducing legislation on yeah, it. I, I want us to, you and I, Peter, we'll sit down and do this again. We'll, we'll explore the Stock Act a little bit further next time we see you. Peter Schweitzer, everybody.